The Catholic community of Sacred Heart welcomes you to this celebration of the most holy sacrifice of the Mass on this, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are so pleased you're here as part of our community to celebrate with us the wonder of our God. So I encourage you to get comfortable and allow our God to minister to you for the next hour. We are so blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, as we gather to celebrate this sacred mystery, let's call to mind our sins and bring our weaknesses before the Lord, availing ourselves of his grace. You came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You show us mercy and love, Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in the book of the law. When you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, for this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up to the sky and get it for us and tell us of it that we might carry it out. Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea and get it for us and tell us of it so that we might carry it out. No, it is something very near to you. It is already in your mouths and in your hearts. You need only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him. All things were created for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of the cross. Through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven, 
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? The man said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? The scholar answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, the parable we have just heard is one of the best known and best loved parables of Jesus Christ. And uh, there are so many levels to it and so many wonderful details. But it begins with, uh, note, a scholar who uh, questions Jesus. Now, this is an interesting guy because when he questions, he's not really looking for an answer. He questions Jesus to test him. In other words, let's see if Jesus agrees with the way I think. He already has his answer, so he's not really interested in any kind of teaching that might come forth from Christ. But uh, he's uh, asking, of course, how does he inherit eternal life? And uh, Jesus says, well, you know the scripture. What do you think it says? And uh, the scholar answers perfectly, actually. You know, it's exactly the answer that Jesus himself would give. That first beautiful commandment of love God with everything you've got, and the second conjoined with it, love your neighbor as yourself. But now, note this sentence. I love this one. The scholar wishing to justify himself. Once again, He's, he's not open to anything Jesus has to say to him. He's, he's, he's standing there, testing Jesus, steeped in his own thought, not really interested in knowing what it means to love neighbor or love anybody. This guy loves himself, but still. 
Jesus takes the pains to give this guy and us a little story. And what a story it is. So we have this poor victim. You know, he's in the ditch. Picture him bloodied, battered. He's been robbed, beaten, left half dead, it says. And here comes a priest, and here comes a Levite. These are the officials of the temple. And uh, they're passing by on the opposite side of the street. But they're perfectly right with regard to their ritual purity. Uh, it's written in the law back then that if you touched a corpse or a dead person, you were rendered ritually impure. This means that they could not fulfill their obligations in the temple. And it says they're going up to Jerusalem, so naturally we assume they're on their way to do their duties in the temple, and they really couldn't, in obedience to the ritual purity, assist this guy. So, then Jesus said, here comes a Samaritan. Now, the Samaritans were the most hated people vis-a-vis -vis the Jewish people. Why? It's because they had intermarried with the warring Assyrians who had taken over their land, the enemy. They married them. They bred children with them, and they kind of separated themselves, having their own kind of version of the religion. So they are, they're absolutely despised. Picture the scum of the earth person. Who would that be to you? And it's this bad guy that comes along and does the good deed. And what a good deed he does. I mean, my goodness, talk about go the extra mile. I mean, would you do this? Go uh, dress the guy's wounds, take care of him, put him up, or <laughs> to put him in the back seat of your car, drive him to a hotel, put him up, pay the bill, and say, hey, here's my credit card. Any overages, you know, put on the card, I'll take care of it, and I'll come back on my way from the trip I'm on and check on him. My goodness, this guy went way out of his way for a total stranger, and Jesus asks that scholar, which of these three, the priest, the Levite, or this Samaritan, bad guy, was neighbor to the victim who had fallen to the robbers? And the scholar says, well, I guess the Samaritan. And Jesus says, you've answered correctly. Now you go and do likewise. Whew, Jesus has just blown the doors off any kind of discrimination when it comes to neighborliness, when it comes to loving who's right there in front of you. How might we miss the call to minister to someone right in front of us because we have some other agenda going on. I have a chilling true story to share with you that kind of illustrates the point of this. Uh, back when uh, Cardinal Joseph Bernardin was the Archbishop of Chicago, he called together a conference on social justice. Uh, answering the crime sprees going on in Chicago. And uh, there were two seminarians from Mundelein, and they were invited, great honor, to be on the stage with the archbishop and present a five-minute talk each, giving the student perspective of social justice in the community. This is a true story. So these two guys are showing up for this afternoon uh, taping, and it's, it's going to be televised, a big deal. The archbishop, everybody's there, full audience, and they're coming in to the stage door. So big honor. Here they come. They've got their cufflinks. They've got their Roman collars and their suits, and they're, they're all prepared. They've got their hair combed perfectly, shaved beautifully, and... Uh, you're going up the back little stairs into the stage door, and here's this guy 
right in front of the door, kind of like a street person calling out to them, and they just kind of stepped right over this guy and went in to fulfill their obligation, their duty. As it turns out, this guy was one of the stagehands and was having a heart attack. And he died. Ha! Ah, there we have it. Who is the neighbor? Sometimes we get so agenda filled, and generally, like that scholar, we're right about something, that it blinds us to see a person right in front of us who is calling forth our charity, calling forth our love. You know, and it's amazing, I don't know if you made the connection yet with the first reading so beautifully proclaimed by Gwen from Deuteronomy where we have the first allusion to natural law. But Moses is saying, hey, you know, the law, <laughs> love God, love your neighbor, is not so deep that you can't fathom it. It's not like you have to send somebody into the heavens to bring this understanding to you. You don't have to send someone across the sea to bring this home to you. It's written in your hearts. In other words, you know. Down deep, you know that you are to be attentive to the neighbor. You know that your fellow beings are the same as you. Each human being deserves the dignity and the respect and the calling forth of the charity in times of necessity and need. You know it. I know it. But sometimes we contradict our own common sense etched in our hearts by God because we prefer our ritual purity, don't we? And you know exactly what I mean. Sometimes it's our religion. Oh, let's just see in the name of God how many times people have used that platform as permission to hate this group, that group, these people. Just think about the political divide when your mind is made up over and against somebody else. Oh, how easy it is to march right over those people and forget that they're the neighbor. Oh, how simple it is in God's name to be able to discriminate hatefully against people who disagree with you or with me with regard to where we stand with the Second Amendment, with regard to where we stand with gay and lesbian, LGBTQI plus rights, where we stand with this platform, that platform, this political party, that political party, hey, time for us to take a breath and remember what's written in our hearts is the law of Almighty God. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And so, do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth? I do too. And do you believe in his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? I do. I do too. Do you believe that Jesus, who died, rose from the dead, that he ascended into the heavens, that we say in a beautiful metaphor that he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and to him alone belongs the divine right to judge anyone, the living and the dead? I do. I do, I do too. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy 
Catholic Church. The communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. I do too. This is our faith, and we celebrate it with great joy on this 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us turn now to the Lord with our prayers, asking that his voice will renew in us our love for God and neighbor. For church leaders throughout the world, that they may continue to be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. For those in authority, that the leaders of the world's nations act with integrity, may relieve poverty, and bring an end to injustice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. That the lonely, the frail, and the aged in our society will not be ignored or passed by, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer that we may come to love the Lord with all our heart and with all our strength and obey his commands to love others as we do ourselves, no matter what barriers of race or religion lie between us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. From, for those who have turned from the practice of their faith, that they may be open to hear the voice of God within and to see him at work in this community of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the sick of our parish and for all who have asked for our prayers, the homebound military, law enforcement personnel, and all first responders. We pray for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries of death occur at this time. May they now share in the banquet of God's eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful God, you have given us the fullness of your love in Christ Jesus. May the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and the work of our hands proclaim the holiness we find in your beloved Son. Help us live as members of his body, one with you and with each other in the bond of love, both now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. The fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our our good and the good of all this holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayers to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to each other a sign of peace. If you are in solitude praying with us today, please remember the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia in the war-torn spot in our world today. The peace and tranquility be restored soon to those homelands. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oh God, beyond all praises, we worship you today. And sing the love amazing that songs cannot
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may, go, may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, thank you for partnering with us every time you hit the like and the subscribe and the alert button, as well as sharing with someone if you think they could use the message of our liturgy today. And we enjoy very much reading your comments and welcome everyone that would perhaps like to comment on uh, the message shared today. And uh, we enjoy hearing from all of you, whether you're in the United States or throughout the world. That said, dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration of the Eucharist is finished. We go forth in peace and joy to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a beautiful rest of the week, everyone. Persecuted, not abandoned